Why'd you go to New York then? It was the next step. I wanted, I wanted bigger and other. But you wanted to do plays, not your focus was on plays. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh, yeah. I went to New York. Uh, I had a nice agent. She was incredibly patient with me. God, I just. Oh man. I disappointed everyone who ever worked with me. How'd you get an agent? Um, well, when you come from one of these big schools, you are showcased in New York in the spring of your graduating year. Yeah. It was the uh, PATP showcase. Uh, and you, were, you, you did scenes at Juilliard in front of everybody in New York, agents, casting directors, and all like that. It was great. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I did okay there. Um, and, uh, and, and I stayed in touch with several agents. Uh, when I went back to Seattle and continued to work, got some nice reviews, um, and, uh, and, and, you know, sent them off to New York cause that was what you did back then. Yeah. We didn't have computers or phones or anything like that. Uh, and, uh, so I went to New York I chose this agent. She was great. And, uh, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a freaking star. <laughs> Hang on a second. I, I, I really need to decide whether, yeah, I'll tell the story. So Ooh, bitch. it's a good one. I'd been there six weeks. Okay. And I got my first audition for a half hour multicam TV pilot. Okay. So, so she was sending you to TV and film. Yeah. Okay. I got everything. Regional theater, okay, TV, cool. film. Um, and I went there and for the lead, for the husband. And I looked like I'm nine at that point, right? <laughs> uh, and I act even younger. But, uh, so I go there and all the rest of the guys are tall, dark, and handsome. And I'm like, well, this is bullshit, you know? Uh, so I'm going to do what I want. And I rewrote everything. Oh, wow. Everything. And it was good. I was funny. Um, and uh, killed. And uh, LA casting director flies out and I get a call back and I rewrite everything again. And I go on in and uh, kill. And rewrite means you were just like changing your lines completely. Yeah. All the jokes, all the setup, everything. Wow. Okay. I had absolutely no right to do this. except, no. <laughs> And I didn't know it then, but I was funny. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, it worked and, uh, I have 5,000 stories in which that did not work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so then the LA, uh, the, the producer number two or three producer in all of half hour sitcom, uh, comes to New York and I get the final call and this is it. You know, this is, this is the, I'm going to get a contract or not. Yeah, it was like James, and my agent says, was it James Burrow? Honey. No, okay. number two or three. Um, uh, uh, um, um, James was great. Uh, she says she was from Texas. She said, honey, th this is serious now. You know, I need you to take this seriously. And I did. I said every line exactly the way it was written. It was a prototypical actor's nightmare. I can hear my lines bouncing back and forth inside my head. I'm horrible. I suck. I'm stiff. Um, it's just, and I literally see this producer look away from me in the middle of one of my scenes and turn and glare at the casting director sitting next to him because I was so hideous. Oh. I was all, and I could see him, you know, I could see him. Yeah. I'm literally crying by the time I hit the door. Oh, I'm literally sobbing. And, uh, it was for, um, uh, Stanley Sobel and Jason Lapadura, who is Jason Lapadura today. It's Lapadura Hart. Uh, Stanley's dead. Um, and, uh, I, I went out and got drunk as hell. And, and, you know, my agent called me the next morning. She said, honey, what happened? I said, I don't know. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Uh, and they said, well, sweetie, they, they thought maybe you were tired, but they want to see you again tonight. Wow. And you're the only one they're going to see. And I was like, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got this. And I did. I went, you know, had a beer, went for a run, had a beer, rewrote everything, went in there and just destroyed it. Yeah. Um, so they made the offer. 7,500 for the pilot, 7,500 per episode. It was a seven year contract, which just blew my mind. That's I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Couldn't freaking handle it. And also at that time, half hour multicam was a dead end. If you were doing TV, you would never do or be taken seriously in film. Or in theater. Okay. Now, timing was never one of my fortes. Because that was all actually like that week changing. 
Now you have to be a big hit on TV in order to right. be able to do Broadway or anything like that. Right, right. But at the time, I wanted to work with Meryl Streep. Um, uh, uh, I, I wanted to be on Broadway, and I wanted to do movies. Yeah. Uh, so I turned it down. No way. Yeah. And, and my agent was very upset because 7500 bucks a week was, I mean, again, if 450 a week was good, 7500 was That's fucking awesome. Bang, they doubled it. What? 15,000 for the pilot, 15,000 per episode. This story um, is but going I was, up and down. I, I was, I was, I, a roller coaster ride I was, I was, this is all true. This is all absolutely true. It's all going in my autobiography, by the way. Okay. Uh, which, which uh, it's not out yet, uh, but it's called failure. Um, <laughs> my life in art. Um, they double the offer, 15,000, 15,000 per episode. And, uh, and, and my agent wanted to talk to me and, and, uh, I was raised Catholic. I was absolutely pure. Money could not touch me. In fact, I became even more insulted. So, of course, I turned it down. I get bang. They doubled it again. 30,000 30, per episode in 84. And I'm in the office when she's talking to the producer saying, well, he feels very strongly. And, you know, he just got here. And she was trying so hard to not screw her relationship with the casting office and with one of the biggest producers in the United States. And, I, of course, I had no awareness of of what she, of the difficult position she was in. Yeah. Um, and then she said, and I, I, I won't mention names, but she said, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I won't do No, I can't. No. Billy, he wants to talk to you. I said, sure, absolutely. She said, you shouldn't. I said, oh, I'll talk to him. Give me the phone. And of course, back then it was, they handed you the phone. It was on one of those like 20 foot long yeah. cords, right? <laughs> she has me the phone. And you're like 24 at this age, 25. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I said, yeah, hey. And this voice just says, don't ever fucking come to Los Angeles. Bang. <laughs> oh, my. I have so many questions from this. It was, it was, I, I just, this, so for wait. me, hang on a second. I, I need to wrap it up only because it, it's taken me 35 years to figure out what the fuck I was doing. Uh, I always thought it was about artistic purity. Yeah. And it wasn't. It was fear. I was just, I needed to control because I'd been, I'd been so sort of screwed and screwed up in my childhood, and I developed really strong defense mechanisms. I could do things really well in a really narrow range. Yeah. Outside of that just terrified me. And I, I said no just because I was scared and insecure. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, and when did you have that realization? Uh, I think last week. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it was a few years ago, but it was only a few years ago uh, when I had to kind of start going back and looking at, at decisions that I made in my career that were mistakes. Yeah. Um, again, as part and parcel of what I teach other actors, because most actors deal with most of the same issues, both professionally in terms of the t t their technique and execution, but then also personally. Um, and control is one of those. Yeah. Um, on the flip side, I was very, very lucky. Because a year later, I was on Broadway with Ed Harris. Sure. You know, so I, 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 there was, but I made a mistake and I never got that kind of an opportunity again. But why did they not hate you for rewriting the script every time? I don't get, what? they just really two, liked two, how charismatic reasons, you were? You two were? reasons. One, there was still an acceptance of the artist and his or her creative personality. Sure. Um, like they could write around what you were giving them. Ob basically. And objectively, I was funny. I mean, you'd see it. And I got, you know, later on on Home Improvement, um, I, I got to suggest jokes. Sure. You know, and they'd use them. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 objectively, I was, I, I was a funny guy. I, I recognized what they wanted, the kind of energy, what the effect on the audience was, what was supposed to happen in that moment. Yeah. Um, and I would, I, would, I would do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, also, that was the time when stand-up comics were brought in, Robin Williams, Roseanne, etc., uh, and they deferred to that creative element. Sure. Um, then, when television, in particular, became much more homogenized, the control, the suits came in, and, and no, you, you do it our way first, and then we'll see. You yeah. Know? And now, certainly in auditions, well, there's a little bit of latitude there, depending, but. Um, uh, yeah, now these days you don't you don't rewrite.
Gotcha. Did this show end up being huge? No, God, no, it never, oh. it never aired. And that's oh, what my, age, my agent kept saying. She kept saying, "Honey, it sucks. I'm glad you're real good in it, but it's never going to get picked up. You're going to get thirty thousand dollars, be on every list in New York and Hollywood, yeah. and walk away with some money. What's wrong with that?" That's a great impression. And, and she Wait, was what's right. the point of a seven-year contract, though, if they don't even have a... Well, if it works, they want to lock you in. Right, but it's... Uh, that's... Lock well, you in got, for like a year, I feel like. No, because then, 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 then you want, you know, then you money, want friends' money, yeah, you know, yeah. after, the, after a year. That's great. What a crazy story.